strange lights are still occasionally seen in Gulf Breeze, it is no longer considered to be a UFO hotspot. Whatever supposedly was going on in Gulf Breeze, it's not going on anymore. Oh, look at that. Huge. Look at that. Oh, it doubled. There it goes. It's doubling. Up next, a Washington state man claims to be living in the middle of one of the world's major UFO hotspots. Winter 2002. Deep in the Mojave Desert, an alleged UFO hotspot, a flashing light beams a hopeful Morse-coded message to the stars. Hello, we are peaceful. Dr. Colm Kelleher and his colleagues at the National Institute of Discovery Science, or NIDS, are searching for signs of intelligent life in the universe. Armed with a light-gathering telescope, an electrospectrometer to analyze the light, and geomagnetic sensors to measure radio and microwave emissions, Dr. Kelleher hopes to amass physical data to prove, beyond a scientific doubt, that UFOs exist. The primary focus is to try to get physical data with respect to UFOs, and I think only a person who's been working in this field for quite a while would appreciate the absolute difficulty in getting physical data on UFOs because you never know when they're going to appear, you never know how long they're going to stay, and you never know why they would appear in a particular place. NIDS operates a 24-hour hotline for UFO sightings. And although 95% of the accounts turn out to be IFOs, identified flying objects, like airplanes or weather balloons, there is still the 5% that defies explanation. And that 5% is what interests Dr. Kelleher. If we got a series of reports, say in the last five or six months or even a year, from the same area, same location, different eyewitnesses that appeared to corroborate, we would take those reports seriously. And one alleged hotspot that is raising some serious questions in the UFO community is the Yakima Mount Adams area in southeastern Washington state. The Yakima Indian Reservation in Washington has the appearances of being a UFO hotspot for many years. UFOs have been reported from the fire towers, from rangers, from uh, people camping, that sort of thing, over and over and over. James Gilliland is the owner of the Sattva Sanctuary, a UFO-friendly spiritual retreat located nearby. He claims the whole area is rife with UFO activity. The sanctuary here is located right at the base of Mount Adams next to the Yakima Reservation and it has over a hundred year history of recorded UFO activity. Well, I'd say this is probably one of the major hotspots in the world right now because it's almost nightly that we see at least one or two if not 15 to 25 UFOs flying in the area. Gilliland and fellow seekers gather regularly in the summer months for sky watches. They play music and meditate and wait patiently for UFOs to appear. They're looking for people that are very spiritually aware, that have kind hearts, that, that love people, love humanity and the earth. And those are the ones that will be ambassadors to bring forward their message because those people have risen to the occasion. As Gilliland and others see it, the anomalous lights that appear above his property exhibit both intelligence and intent. What these ships are doing, they're inquisitive, they're morphing, they're responding to lights, they're responding to the telepathic messages of those people on the ground. Whoa! There we go, we got it. That was a good one. We actually have some that morph from a round object to a triangle when we draw a big triangle in the sky, and then it goes back to a round object and then leaves again with multiple witnesses. 
When you're talking about lights in the sky, it's very difficult to say what causes them. Are they natural phenomena or are they not? When they seem to fly into an area, or stop and react to people yelling or to flashes of light or something else, what causes the reaction? Do natural phenomena do that? One theory proposes that the lights in the sky are not doing anything, but the observer's eyes are. Something called the autokinetic phenomenon, the, the eye literally cannot focus properly on a single bright point source of light against a dark background, and so it seems to bob around, move around, wiggle, zigzag. All these things are perfectly normal behavior, but it's the behavior of your eye, it's not the behavior of the object itself. Trick of the eye or not, some believe that Gilliland's role at the center of the UFO activity that surrounds his home is characteristic of all of the areas deemed a hot spot. We've investigated in a couple of uh, quote-unquote hot spots and we are beginning to realize that any of the areas that we focus on usually has a single individual in that area who becomes a lightning rod for multiple reports from the community. When you have a charismatic leader or somebody who's identified as an authority on UFOs, people will go where that leader says the UFOs are to be found and there'll be more people watching and you'll have more sightings reported in those areas. But it's a psychological, sociological kind of a thing. It's not related any way to what's actually up there. The major portion of people that are coming here are more aligned to trying to understand the experience on a more spiritual nature, but we do have a lot of, we call them looky-loos, that are coming just to try to see one. That there are strange, often inexplicable phenomena in the night sky is undeniable. But just what these phenomena are, and whether they tend to cluster in time and place to form UFO hotspots is open to debate. As far as the skeptics are concerned, on every level, you cannot instill want into another being. You can't get them to open their eyes or look at what's obvious. We showed them footage of ships flying behind trees, landing on the mountain doing phenomenal feats, making U-turns, um, right-angle turns at several thousand miles an hour. And their standard pat answer is these are meteors or satellites. It's just amazing. We don't want to feel that we're alone in the universe. We don't want to feel that life is without a purpose. We don't want to feel that there's nothing out there in the way of a mystery. We human beings want our lives to be exciting. But just because something is exciting doesn't make it true. Will we ever colonize it like we do in the movies? What are the dangers that lie in wait for us? Join us for an entire weekend as we separate science fiction from science fact. Final Frontier Weekend, tonight at 8 p.m. as only the History Channel can bring you.